Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship uh, as we continue the Easter celebration in the church. The uh, season of Eastertide continues, so we continue uh, in the exploration of the, of the resurrection and its impact on the world and, and on us. So welcome into this time of worship. Those of you who are here in person on this somewhat kind of gloomy, uh, drizzly day, we're blessed by your presence. Uh, those of you joining us online, we're, we're blessed that you're able to join us in that way. Uh, we will share communion uh, together, so uh, those of you here present are welcome to come forward at the direction of the ushers. You'll receive the host in your hand and proceed to dip that into the chalice as we commune together. And at home, you're welcome to get uh, whatever elements you have available to you uh, so that you might also uh, join us around the altar, which extends out beyond uh, this worship center uh, to include everybody who joins us. So, welcome to worship. Go ahead and say good morning in the comments there. You can see we're set up uh, for Ask the Pastors uh, Sunday this morning, which is uh, an odd tradition that we have here at Prince of Peace, where every once in a while we kind of uh, step aside from the regular rhythms of our uh, worship to do what is uh, really commonly known as, as public theology, a way to discuss issues of the faith. Uh, we like to do it in the midst of the gathered worship service, so uh, Pastor Natalia and myself will come uh, up front and sit down, and uh, there will be a microphone available. So if you have a question, a comment, something related to this Easter season, uh, a question related to the Bible or, or our faith traditions, uh, then you'll be welcome, and we'll, we'll see if we can engage those uh, here in this, in this public setting. So we look forward to that time uh, as well. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say? Oh, there's Food Truck Sunday coming up, a festival out in our parking area. This is going to be on the 28th. So be aware of that. That's a, a fun thing that gathers people from around the community, and uh, there's some really great options out there when this, when this happens, so we love to be able to accommodate such things. Um, and so uh, we, we're, that's one of the things we're looking forward to. Uh, so let's stand. We'll say good morning to those around us as we prepare to enter in this time of worship uh, by singing our opening hymn. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, by whom we have been reborn to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Rejoicing in Christ's victory over sin and death, 
let us come before God who calls us to repentance. God of life, by the resurrection of your Son, you make everything new. Newness scares us, and we confess to shutting our doors in fear. We have not listened to voices that challenge us. We have resisted the Holy Spirit, moving us in new directions. Our hearts are slow to believe your promises. Forgive us, O God, and renew us to embrace without fear the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, Christ is alive and death has lost its power. Through the waters of baptism, you have been born anew by the living word of God. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. The spirit of the risen Christ is alive in you, both now and forever. Amen. May be seated for the offering. There we go. Not that I need this. Let's be real. Uh, there's something magical about just p straight up piano music. Um, at this time, I would like to invite my young friends to come forward for kids' time. So kiddos, you can come on up. And as they do, just a couple quick announcements. Um, the, the greenhouse that we order our plants through uh, is being really gracious with me because last week was um, Holy Week slash plants Holy Week recovery slash plant sale. And so they're letting me turn in the order tomorrow. So today is the absolute last day to order plants if you would like to order plants from our plant sale. Um, but also, I had the privilege of carrying an entire soup pot of coins into the bank on, I can't remember, it was Tuesday or Wednesday. And I, I gave you all a goal on Easter Sunday to make it so heavy that I couldn't lift it. And I could lift it, but I shouldn't have 
because I walked around all afternoon on Sunday with a very sore back. So, um, but we brought in over $700 during Lent. Um, and I will also say this, if the amount of dollars would have been put in in coins, I definitely would not have been able to lift it. Um, but when I dropped off the check to Seep earlier this or last week, uh, and when I said I was, was with Prince of Peace, every single person that heard me say I was with Prince of Peace, oh, we just love all of the support that your church gives to us. So if you were here a few weeks ago when Kevin from Avenues was here and said how much they appreciate the support that we give them. SEEP very much feels the same way, so thank you for all of the support that you help us give those organizations. And kiddos, don't worry. Uh, we will find more times for you to collect coins during offering, because I know how much you love it. All right, good morning. I would like us to make a list today of Reasons we love coming to church. So who can raise their hand and tell me one thing that they love about coming to church? Grace. Worshiping God and, and Wally was her other reason. Max, why do you love coming to church? You love the fun things we do in the CLC? The food? I was waiting for that one, because let's be honest, how many of you love the cookies? Yep. Congregation, how many of you love the cookies? See? All right, so we've got the fun things we do in the CLC, worshiping God, the cookies. What else, Bryn? Because we learn when we come to church. Why else do we like coming to church? Do we have fun? Do we, and we get to eat, we get to release some energy, right? Can I tell you one of the things I love most about coming to church, besides the energy that I get from you guys? You want to know what I love most about coming to church? I like coming to church because if I don't, I might miss something big. Important. Yeah, I might miss something big and important. And did you know in our gospel story today, we hear a story about a man who missed something really big and really important. How do you think it would feel to miss out on something that was really big and really important? Bryn, what do you think? It would be kind of lonely. Evelyn, what do you think? You would maybe feel bad? Sad? Yeah. It's not fun to miss out on something big and important. And in our story today, we hear about a man who missed out on something really big and really important. So when we go to children's ministry, we're going to talk about what it did to that man and how he recovered from it. All right? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you today for gathering us here. We ask you today to open our hearts and ears to hear your stories. In your name we pray. Amen. Half of you were standing before the prayer had even started. All right, today, I want you to hop like bunnies. Ready, go. Wow. Someone forgot to tell them that this is known as Low Sunday, the Sunday after... <laughs> Easter is supposed to be low energy, and boy, <laughs> none of that's going on in, in here. So welcome again. Uh, we like to begin these times of, uh, of discussion with the readings assigned for uh, the particular Sunday. So here, uh, as we gather, as I said, still in the context of Easter in the church, 
I want to quickly read uh, the passage. Uh, in, in, during the Easter tide season, the first reading which the lectionary gives us is generally an Old Testament reading from the Hebrew Scriptures. Uh, but during this stretch of Sundays, it comes from the book of Acts, so we can kind of track with the kind of growth of the early church. Uh, and so I'll read the passage assigned for today from the book of Acts. It's a short one, and then uh, the gospel reading, which Katie was referring to there with the, with the kids. Uh, so the, the fourth chapter of Acts, uh, 32nd verse, first reading, Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles uh, gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. So this kind of lovely, idealized vision of the early church, if you will, um, gathered and holding all things in common. And so maybe this spurs a question or a comment from you as we uh, enter into this time of discussion. And let me just uh, share the gospel as well from the 20th chapter of St. John, uh, though we are in the kind of the year of Mark's gospel on certain Sundays, um, the lectionary will jump over to John's gospel. So the uh, 20th chapter, beginning in the 19th verse. Uh, when it was evening on that day, and that day was Easter, okay, the day of resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After this, he said, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told Thomas, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and I put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. So, two very vibrant uh, passages, um, images of the early church, and really kind of, <laughs> as they are juxtaposed in the lectionary, different images, one of, of uh, the early Christians gathering and holding all things in common so that nobody ha uh, has need, uh, all needs are satisfied, and the other with the disciples on the day of resurrection already have fled and found some house where they're locked away in fear uh, because what happened to Jesus, uh, resurrection news notwithstanding, could certainly happen to them as well. So I'll, I'll leave it there. If, there, if you have a question or comment, uh, Mike has the mic. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, he'll bring it to you. Uh, and so be brave. Uh, yeah, uh, where we go? Terry? Terry's over there. Yeah, thank you. In John 14, 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. At our Bible study this past week, we talked about the Jewish faith and how they don't believe in Jesus and how do they go to heaven? How, do they, how does that work with them? We were 
some people were concerned that they were the forgotten, even though they were the chosen. So can you answer that question? Mm. If it, everything goes through Jesus to God, how does that affect the Jewish faith? Yeah, it's great. It's a common question. I know Natalia loves that passage, so <laughs> I can... <laughs> so. Uh, I do love that passage because uh, this is such a good example of the way we have uh, made a grace-filled, beautiful text into a conditional uh, text used to condemn or exclude. So what Jesus is saying, no one comes to the Father except through me, and here I am, right? It's not, it doesn't say, um, and believing, we often translate believing as like a verb. It's not a verb. Um, and pistos tends to mean, the Greek word tends to mean more like trust than believe. So we get that in today's gospel text. Uh, do not doubt but believe is actually a pistos but pistos. So it's like, don't be untrusting but be trusting. Um, which is a very different phrase than like you have, belief makes us feel like it's this set of things you have to subscribe to, agree to, uh, profess in order to condition. That's a condition. If this happens, then you get this. What Jesus is saying, uh, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to know God, know me. That's fine. But Jesus is not the only way to know God. I think many of us have experienced God out in nature, in the created world, right? We've experienced God in lots of different ways. But this Except through me, Jesus is like, and here I am. I'm going to do all this stuff so that the way to God is made straight and clear and easy, right? So Jesus takes out all of the, you know, the curtain being torn on, on Good Friday. That, that barrier between us and God is destroyed through the person of Jesus. And our path to God becomes open because of Jesus. And I don't think our, what Jesus did requires some belief that Jesus did, Jesus did it, it happened, whether or not I believe it happened, whether or not I say it happened, that is such good news for me who doubts and struggles and doesn't always know if this thing is real, to say it happened whether or not I believe it happened. So Jesus opens the way to God whether or not I'm like, yay, Jesus, thanks for opening the way to God. Like that, it's not about me in that moment, and Jesus is making that so clear, and somehow we've turned it uh, into a, so you better believe, uh, or else, and there's just not a lot of or else in this gospel. There shouldn't, and when we, when we make it an or else, we have, we have flipped something that is pure grace into being something else, and I, that makes me irrationally angry every time. You want to add anything to that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me just climb off my soapbox and. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it, yeah, it's probably one of the most um, co-opted passages uh, in a, in the sort of exhaustive effort to turn gospel into law. So to take this beautiful statement of grace that um, is inclusive and. And, and to try and narrow it down. So what, what um, ha it tends to happen is this scripture is uh, um, presented through the lens of some narrow theological uh, set of regulations to say, well, in our tradition, what it means to uh, be a follower of Christ or a person of the way or a Christian or a whatever the title is, what it means is you, you pray this prayer or you, do, you, you succumb to this believer's baptism or, you, or there's these four tenets you ascribe to, and that's what it essentially means to believe in Jesus. So, so, the, so beyond just taking it out of context, it's redefined and, and, and stapled on to our view of what it takes to get yourself into the kingdom of heaven. And uh, so it's just, uh, uh, as, as Natalia shared, it's, 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 it's part of this um, inclination, and we all have it on some level to turn uh, grace and gospel into law. 
You can just, here's just a little test I like to apply, and I'll <laughs> leave it with you. Whenever there is a threat involved, it can't possibly be gospel. So for those who would say, unless you follow our rules to, say, to prove that you believe in Jesus, and whatever those rules might be, say it out loud, um, like I said, be baptized uh, as an adult, uh, accept Jesus into your heart. Whatever it is, there's something that you must do. And if you don't do it, then, you know, a vengeful God is going to condemn you to eternal punishment. That is nothing but a threat, and it can't possibly be gospel. So it, it, it masquerades in some fine-sounding theology uh, but it is nothing more than judgment. And, and so, you know, look at Jesus himself told stories of Abram in, in paradise and unable to, to breach the chasm to somebody on the other side. Uh, Abraham didn't know Jesus. How did he get there in that story? You know, <laughs> so uh, there's lots of little ways we can chip away at this, but the big one is gospel's gospel and law is not. And law is something that I'm required to do to get right with God, and I never get that right. I just always trip on myself. So Jesus telling me that I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and uh, uh, that, that, that is anybody who asks me, I can tell them, yeah, he means you. Now that person that I'm saying, he means you. He includes you, welcomes you, loves you, forgives you, claims you. That person might say, ah, I believe something else. Okay. That didn't change what I just, not just said to you, but did to you. I did God's good news to you. And that's well beyond either of our power to squirm out of. So we are bearers of good news. We are not bearers of a, a threat of eternal damnation. And anybody who tells you it's an either-or proposition on that particular passage has gotten that twisted and backwards. Um, and it happens to the best of us, but gospel's gospel, law is not. Law is what you must do, you're required to do, say or believe. Uh, and we, we, you know, we should be more generous than we are. But God does not banish us to hell when we're not. We should be more faithful than we are. We are not banished to hell when we aren't. We should be more knowledgeable of God's word, and, and, but we are not banished to hell. You know, if that's what this was all about, avoiding some threat all the time, then I don't know, you can have it. But it, is, it, it isn't. It just isn't. That's why it's good news. And uh, that's a great question. That, that passage comes up a lot. So, yeah. And our Lutheran theology says you're following the law, being more generous, being more faithful, being more curious, being more these things is on behalf of your neighbor, not yourself. You, you're good. You're, you're, God has done the thing for you. All of the good work we try, the things we work on that we fail at and, and falter at are for the sake of the people around us who need us to be more generous and more loving and more caring and more faithful. It's not because God needs me to do that for God's sake, like, like God needs me to boost God's ego. Oof. Uh, but like, for the sake of the people around me, I can make their life better, I can make the world better, I can be a part of bringing the kingdom of God here now by doing those things, by adhering to the law for the sake of not myself, but someone else. That's why Lutherans are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that was such a big question, Terry. Good job. Uh, where's Mike? Oh, Mike's in the back. He's waiting for a hand. There's one. Here we go. It's hard to. <laughs> Mike's like 6'4. I don't know why I couldn't find him in the room. <laughs> when I hear the gospel um, with about. Thomas, I always find him really relatable because you, I kind of want to know if I, I'm, if I were there, I'd want to be like, well, that's a lot to take in, you know, that you die and you're, you're here again, and and then after this, he goes back, he goes up bodily to heaven. And then Jesus says, uh, you know, bless are those who see, but or believe but don't see. So what would you? How do we? 
could you help us get there? Like, what, what um, would you tell people who d who do doubt, like Thomas, and about they don't trust that that promise? You know, I th it's something we want for people. It's the treasure of the church is this is this Easter faith, and to the extent that that through the proclamation, through the community of believers, um, through God's word proclaimed, preached, and experienced in the sacraments, we would hope that this Easter faith can, can um, be given and received from people, by people. Um, so that's our reason for existing. Uh, it's who we are as, as God's people. And, and so we have this lovely picture of one of Jesus' own disciples who had trouble um, understanding or experiencing the resurrected Christ. And, and, and so Jesus, in that case, gave Thomas what Thomas needed, you know. And, and Thomas proclaims one of the, uh, the most uh, profound uh, Christological uh, proclamations of the Gospels when he says, my Lord and my God. He's the first one to proclaim that. And yet we, we, we've tagged him as Doubting Thomas and there seems to be no getting out of that for him. So, um, <laughs> uh, But along the way, most all of the disciples were shown to have stumbled in their faith, you know, from Judas betraying for 30 coins um, to the rest of them where we find them today, locked away in a house in fear. You know, f faith is something that per perhaps ebbs and flows. And, and so it isn't, it, it, the, I think the trick for us is to never see it as a demand, but as a gift, a precious gift. And, man, I've seen that gift walk people out of this life to the next in peace. I'd love that to be my reality, but more than that, I'd love it to be yours. For this faith to just be woven into yourself so that whether it's you or someone you love knows God's present with them because you're there. This is a beautiful, powerful, profoundly important thing. So we want it for you, and we have no fiber of our being demanding it of you, nor do we believe God does. It is always, faith is always this precious gift trying to be given. And, and we need to hear it and hear it and hear it and see it and be inspired by those living it out. And sometimes our faith is weak, but somebody else in the community is strong. So we live it out together. It's really a communal reality. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm really addressing exactly what <laughs> what you maybe are getting at, but. I love, Thomas is such a good character. I think it's, it, it's so good for us to all take a second and think, what would my nickname be if I was recorded in this moment, right? Like, uh, oppositional Natalia would probably be number one, right? That would be such a bummer way to be known for all of eternity. Uh, what a bummer, right? Doubting Thomas, that sucks for him. And to ask yourself the question, he doubts for a bit, but honestly, he's not doubting. He is, he is uh, apistoing. He is, apistos means untrusting. He's not trusting the words of the people around him. Good gosh, who can blame him? They got to see Jesus. And he's like, I just want what you guys had. I just want Mary got to see Jesus in the garden. She runs to tell the disciples. Do the rest of them believe her? No. Jesus comes to see them, and then they're like, oh, that's right, but Thomas is the one that gets the title. Um, if any of you have ever had the experience of hearing somebody having a, a moment of faith where they feel like God was really present, and you're like, oh, I, I've never had that. I wish I would have that. I'm so jealous that somebody else has had this profound, powerful God experience, and I have not. You have such good company in Thomas, right? He is the one who's like, I want that. I 
want that. I want that more than I want anything else. I want it, I'm going to say it in the grossest way possible, but I'm going to say I want what everybody else had. And Jesus is like, okay, here I am. Go for it. Touch my hands. Touch my side. I mean, he, we don't say gross, Thomas, but maybe that should be the thing we call him, right? We call him apistos Thomas. Do not, he's not trusting in the words of other people. Paul's wife, Amy, who you've heard sing here, she sent me her sermon. She's preaching this text this morning. She gave me the most gentle reframe of this, blessed are you who do not believe, uh, who have not seen but believe, um, which is when, when you doubt and your faith has fallen apart, you would not wish that on anybody else. So b- God bless you if you didn't need what Thomas needed. God bless you if you can do this without seeing it. I can't right? What a gorgeous reframe to say. Uh, Some of us do believe the words of others. Good on you. I need more than that. Sorry, I need more than that, right? And to, to be asking God for more than that does not make you less than. And the fact that God says, Jesus says to Thomas in this moment, don't be untrusting. Trust me. Trust, trust that you are seeing what you are seeing is real. Trust me. And what does Thomas say? My Lord and my God. He chooses trust even when he is struggling in the moment, even when it is unbelievable. Um, it's hard to believe because this is hard to believe. There's nothing wrong with struggling to believe something that's hard to believe. And there's nothing wrong with, with asking God for more. I need more. I think often when we ask for God, ask God for more, and we are open to God showing up, God shows up. Uh, it may not look like we expect it, uh, but God shows up. Nobody expected Jesus to pop into a locked room, uh, but God shows up. And so I just think if we are open to the many ways in which God shows up in the world, God will give us what we ask for. Let me climb off another soapbox. Jeez. Uh, I, I don't <laughs> think that was a soapbox. <laughs> I think it's just good to um, think of faith as its own beautiful thing, and it's not something that gets you something else. You know, we're always trying to think of it as some kind of currency to buy our place in heaven or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's just back to the question of uh, no one gets to heaven but through me, this this promise that... um, is is nothing but grace and gospel. You know, whenever um, faith is is turned into a requirement, then then it becomes this currency to buy us something else. Faith. I mean, you know, so pe- you, so you see people complain about um, jailhouse conversions and that sort of thing. Well, this person was this terrible person their whole life, and right at the end they say they believe in Jesus, and now they. Well, I promise you, that person had they come to faith and the knowledge of God's presence with them, and the potential for them to impact other people's lives because they walk around with with God in them. Their whole life up to that point would have been much more meaningful, rich, and beautiful, and wonderful. It isn't that they spent, they somehow got this currency of faith in the last moment, and it's not, the only reason people's mind goes to that's not fair, like the thief on the cross, (laughs) <laughs> uh, saying, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom, and Jesus saying, you'll be with me in paradise today. And when, uh, You know, to a lot of people, that didn't sound fair. You know, the disciples, d- d- you know, declared this sentiment. Uh, you know, we've given up everything to follow you, you know. And, and so the, the, this, the, whenever we kind of turn faith into a currency that n- needs to be spent to buy us something more important or eternal in the end, mm-hmm. then we know we've, we're, we're doing it. We're turning <laughs> gospel into law, and it's a tendency. Um, but if there's one you know, core aspect of our Lutheran faith tradition that's really needed by the world now and always, it is our our, our insistence on, on this grace of God uh, and our proclamation that it is, in fact, for you. And if anybody wonders whether or not we mean it, uh, if we actually mean that them, um, then we, all we have is good news to share, not a threat. Well, it, you know, it would be for you if you did this or if you <laughs> did this or said this or believed this. 
Well, gospel, good news. And my uh, favorite professors in seminary, one in particular, would always end his lectures on this topic by saying, now what? <laughs> so now what? God loves you, claims you, forgives you, in spite of yourself. Whether or not you say you believe it right now, now what? Now what do you do with that? And that's the question we're left with every time we gather. Go in peace, serve the Lord, thanks be to God. Now what? Now what are you going to do out there? And if you are able to go out there with this Easter faith, that this Christ who took all the worst that the world can do, all the violence that we can muster, all of our selfishness, and died with it, died because of it, to give us back a, a new way, a new life, a resurrected life. If you can walk around with, with that faith, part of your reality, then you'll have a richer, lovelier, more meaningful life. And so that's why we keep coming back to it. And and trying to share it. Uh, and it's not a test. You can't fail it. All right. That seems like enough, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good and deep theological questions. Again, doing public theology is always a worthy uh, thing to do. Um, we're, we're talking about the things of God and we're able to do it together. It's unique in this community. Not a lot of churches do this sort of thing, but... Um, We've been doing it a long time, and we're always grateful for the opportunity. So let's continue uh, with a song.
I can see another day come Broken people we can be made whole Broken people we can be made whole Broken people we can be In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please stand together for the prayers of the church. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray together for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us on this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide us all to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person in every place that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering, grief, or pain, those we name aloud now and in the silence of our hearts. This morning we especially pray for Joe and Frank Fetchman and for the family of Fred Doring. God of grace. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew us and open our hearts to discern where your call is for each of us to serve. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen.
thank you again for taking time to uh, gather for worship on this day. Um, we have been fed, we have been forgiven, we have been claimed, we've heard the good news uh, that the gospel of Christ is uh, something that we could not uh, do for ourselves. We cannot appropriate it, um, and we hope, uh, we pray that you have this Easter faith as you go out into the world, whether you do or you do not. The good news is that God in Christ has taken the worst this world can do to give us back, to give you back, new life. So, uh, if you didn't quite get it today, uh, we'll see you next week. We'll take another run at it. But, <laughs> but nothing changed either way. The good news is what it is. Pure gospel, pure gift, and it is for you, given for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, so you can go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.